Hi, I'm Adam Meyer of Mill City Luthery in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And in this video, we have an early 70s Gibson Dove Custom. And we'll take a look at this. It's in great condition. Desperate need of a neck reset and refret. So we're going to go through the process of uh, evaluating that and uh, getting the job done. Um, I'll have the correct year in, in the in the, the title of the video because there's always some overlap with Gibson and their serial numbers and stuff. So uh, it's early 70s, probably a 72 if I recall. Um, in great condition otherwise. So uh, let's get to work. Take a nice look at this guitar closely. Bridge is holding well. No need to re-glue that. There's no need for a bridge plate either. You can see we've got a top that is holding really, really good. Relatively flat and level. All right, we're strung up and in tune. You can see that there really isn't much left for the saddle there. And boy, do we have high string action. Yeah, this needs a refret really bad. Okay, the neck reset is going to come first. Uh, so that means we're taking out the, the 15th fret, drilling down, get into that, that dovetail. Um, but also, uh, this fingerboard tongue needs to be separated from the top first. So, I'm um, going to be heating it up with my, my heating blanket and using a spatula to separate it from the top. Make a special note here, we've got a really nice pick guard. It's original. Not glued on straight, but uh, that's that's not doesn't really matter. Um, I'm not going to take that off because I could cause a lot of finish damage. This is glued down pretty good. So we're going to have to work around that just to be really careful. First thing I do is try and score around in that seam as best I can very lightly I won't be able to get back behind here but it's going to be hidden Depending on the brand, sometimes the neck is finished before it's glued on the body, but uh, this, uh, usually Martin does that, but this was uh, done after. Got my heating pad. It's a little uh, thermostat, I guess. Uh, lets the module know how hot things are, and I just hold it in place with the block. Flip it on. Just listen to the radio for a little bit. I've got this heated up. Now it's just uh, very gingerly finding that seam and working the spatula in. Don't do anything too hard. Also got to be aware of the binding not to, to mess that up. Don't want to have an edge not fit together anymore because you sliced it up. This is sliding in nice and easy. I'm going to stop there and heat it up a little bit more. Put my thumb in place. We're about that far. Got about three quarters of it apart. I've got this heated up. Now it's just uh, very gingerly finding that seam and working the spatula in. Don't do anything too hard. Also got to be aware of the binding not to, to mess that up. Don't want to 
have an edge not fit together anymore because you sliced it up. So uh, this is uh, after heating this for the third time. I can get the spatula all the way. It stops right there. Try and hold my thumb in place. Looks like we're right up to the dovetail where that should be should be right behind that. So uh, I'll get the the fret pulled and we'll uh, see if we can feel the the gap in there. Drill through, I can feel that I went through the fingerboard and hit the gap behind the dovetail. So really I'm just kind of clearing out any possible glue back there. So I took the strap peg out of the neck heel and put a dowel in, glued it up real nice. I want to make sure that, you know, that this is a, you know, we're not weakening the heel down here. We want it to be nice and strong. So, time to get the neck jig on and we'll get this underway. Got the neck jig on and I'm just gonna apply some pressure, not a ton of pressure, upward on the neck. I'll be uh, using a, a syringe and putting some glue or some water down into the neck joint and then got these foam cutting knives. I'll just put them in, keep rotating, adding water, keep checking, seeing if it's starting to come loose and just work its way out. So here we go. So with these, you don't generate a lot of steam, but I can definitely hear down in there that the, the water is basically boiling and steaming. Um, I, I like to use these instead of the, the steamers because you can end up blushing the finish with all that. It, it's just so much easier to control. Listen closely. You can hear the hiss. I took the neck jig off because I wasn't able to actually get the camera angle in here for you to see it, but been uh, letting it heat for a while. You see it's just starting to come loose. Very gingerly, I'm, I'm wiggling it, you know, I'm wiggling it this way, not that way, like this. Just starting to see some progress here, so... Time to get this back together. Keep eating. In the neck jig, you can see the neck is starting to creep its way out. That binding is no longer flush with the top of the body. So we're making progress. See that? That's just 
wood putty. Naughty naughty, Gibson. It's pretty common to have a crack, or relatively common, to have a crack here at the sound hole that goes underneath the fingerboard tongue. And usually, you're lucky enough that it goes along the side of the fingerboard tongue and you can glue it up safely. But so now I can flex this. You can see that we're loose from the neck block up here and also from the brace back here. There's a, a second brace here, but yeah, I'll be uh, getting some glue down in there. We'll clamp this together. Everything supports everything else, so we got to make sure we double check everything when we've got this apart to make sure that it's going to be solid when we get it all back together. It'd be pretty bad to glue this all up and we've got this pressed together but the, the soundboard is partially detached from the neck block. Maybe you can see that there a little bit. All that flex. Oops. Well, the, actually that helps. I can get more glue under there and get this more secure. But I still want to reinforce it. I'm going to put a little cleat in. That'll focus. Just cut it out of a piece, a piece of spruce. And you want to orient, orientate it so that the grain of the cleat goes across the grain of the guitar or across where the crack is. So I cut this out so that, you know, the crack is going like this grain of the cleat is going like that. It'll help hold things together. We've got a cross brace here. Then there's a secondary brace here. It's thin. I forget what they're called. In between them there's a gap. And I'm going to place this cleat right, right there between the two of them. It's a really simple process. Just get a little glue on this. Just get a little glue on it. And it's just a matter of getting it into place. Double check with an inspection mirror, make sure that I am on the crack. And yeah, we're all good. So I've taken a, a hot palette knife and cleaned out any glue on there. Gotta make sure that this actually fits in before we start correcting the neck angle. And obviously it does. We've got little bits of gap from the, the wood filler, but we're, I'm going to deal with that and make everything correct. Uh, something of note here, was not expecting this on this particular model. Usually, when you cut a, a dovetail, it's a little concave through the middle. It's not flat, but Gibson made this one where it's flat. And the idea is you don't want to glue the, all this to the side of the guitar because then that's an absolute nightmare trying to get it off the guitar. So when I do this, I'm also going to add a little bit of a concave space there just so that I can get the neck on and off easier. And uh, if you really know guitar geometry all that much, what we're doing is, got this angle, I'm going to be doing that. What that's going to do, I'm going to make the neck angle steeper like that. And that will bring the strings down. Now, as, as I'm going through fitting this, I need to make sure that you know the, the mating surfaces are as flat as possible. So this guitar in particular was real lumpy in this area. Uh, take a straight edge ruler or whatever and set it along here. Get this turn so you can see going that angle. And it was actually rounded quite a bit quite a bit not like taking off a quarter inch or anything it's just as you set this on here you'll notice to get a little bit of a rocking back and forth 
want to get that lump out otherwise it's going to be really difficult to get your your neck joint fit to this and currently lastly got I like to use a little razor blade on this I've got still just a little bit right down in here that's rounded out like that and that's causing my neck to pivot back and forth even though I check this with the same same tools it's flat got a little rounded spot here so I'm just gonna just touch that up a little bit so I can get everything to fit together really nice. Doesn't take much, just scrape a little with the razor blade. Then you can either use the, the razor blade or whatever to kind of backlight your work. And uh, got this pretty darn flat now. There's an extra issue with doing the neck reset on this particular guitar. Any wood, when you pull two separate pieces together apart, uh, you know, like doing a neck reset or pulling a fingerboard off, whatever, one piece of wood may want to go that way and the other piece of wood may want to go that way. With this guitar, trying to get this neck fit back on, all I've done is just clean out the neck joint so far. And if I set this neck in, and I don't know if you can see it with with the strings on, but treble side is much closer to the edge of the fingerboard here. Plus I have a gap between the binding and the pick guard. That wasn't there before. So we've got something that once I pulled this neck off, wanted to kind of go one way or the other. So I'm going to have to uh, not only bring the neck angle back on this, but I need to bring the neck this way so I can get the strings centered once again. I, I can't, you know, like if you had a, a tunematic bridge on a Les Paul where you can slot the saddle to bring the string one way or the other, I can't do that on this. I'm stuck with where those strings are. So we've got a little extra work with this one. So I'm just holding this in place. Right in there you can see a little bit of wood poking through between the binding and the pick guard. That's not supposed to be there. This is sitting on top of some finish, so we gotta we gotta get it to fit over like that. So when we're correcting the neck angle, you take more off the, the bottom end of the neck than up here. You really don't even touch up here. Personally, what I like to do is I just lay down a strip of tape. And, uh, just kind of use that as a, a little guide to sight along. And I've grown to really like these sanding sticks. And just go along that, of course doing it down here more than up there, until you meet the tape. Then it's time to take the tape off, do the other side. And then uh, I'll show you the next step, help uh, get the, the nice even edge with the body. This area and kind of deeper inside, close to the dovetail, you want that to be recessed a little bit. We don't actually glue this whole surface to the side of the guitar, but if you want to run just a little bit of glue along the edge just to kind of seal up, that's fine. That will come apart if you're doing a neck reset in the future. But uh, usually, what you do in the middle areas here, down back in there, you know, inside, you'll have it uh, kind of scooped away. So really all it is is, you know, taking a nice sharp chisel, grind it away. Or if you have a file or a sanding stick, you just get in there. This takes a little bit longer because you're, you're sanding on end grain, so it's really tough to, to get it carved away. Next is pretty pretty familiar step in, in fitting the neck heel. Uh, want to get both surfaces to match even though I try and flatten them out as much as I can. There's still little variables. 
So you just take, I, I cut up little strips of sandpaper. You just slide, slide it in, hold the neck in place firmly, just slide it through. Keep doing that and, you know, make sure you're doing an even number of passes on either side so that your neck doesn't go out of alignment and you end up with a really nice seam there fitting between the neck and the body. Pretty simple, kind of common sense, but uh, kind of a pretty crucial step in, in getting this right. Now I gotta get this all fit back together again, but for, for gluing. Uh, what I've done, normal procedure, I've glued some shims on both side, sides of the, the dovetail for the, uh, the neck portion, the male portion of the joint. And the tricky thing to remember with this guitar, there is no taper to the, the actual joint. It is straight down. Usually they, they V out. Like Martin, most other brands, that's what they do. You can slide in, sand it, get an idea where, where it's getting tight, and you can sand it off there. But this one, I gotta go just nice and even all the way up and down. I gotta be careful that I don't make it too loose. Um, hopefully I can show you here because it gets stuck easily. Take it into about where it'll stop, and then just do like a little pencil line. I know where I have to go and try and sand that spot and try and just keep getting it to go deeper and deeper into the, the neck pocket until it actually fits and is solid. It's a, a pretty, you know, mind-numbing experience just sitting here and get the radio on and just kind of keep going at it, but that's, that's what you gotta do to get this back together. One last dry run with this. It's all put together. Shims are in place, they're trimmed to fit where the neck joint will slide in nice. It doesn't catch, it goes all the way to the bottom, it doesn't get stuck, but it also doesn't wiggle. When I say fit, fit means that. There's, there's no excess room, there's no excess tightness, it's, it's just right there. No gaps going anywhere around the sides or anything. Also doing this once again to make sure that when I put those shims in that I'm taking the same amount of material off both sides, I, I want to make sure that my strings are staying lined up with the neck. This guitar had a little bit of a problem once I got the neck off. Sometimes old wood wants to shift and once you release a, a glue joint. This neck was going to the treble side, which made the strings want to slide off here and the, the tongue of the fingerboard wasn't touching the pick guard anymore. So, when I was taking the neck back to lower the action, I also had to take a little bit to the base side to get everything lined up again. Uh, it, it's, you wouldn't even be able to tell if I didn't tell you about that, but uh, got to make sure that you're doing all those things because once the, glue, the neck is glued on, I can't correct that anymore. That becomes an issue of like plugging holes in the bridge or it's just something ridiculous that you, you don't want to get involved with. So. Uh, Final dry run, got to get some real glue into it now and we'll be letting it sit for a couple days to set up. Uh...
the heel with a little bit of cherry red lacquer. It's just pre-mixed in one of these markers and I put a little bit out onto a sheet of paper just along the edges here. It's different than doing a neck reset on something like a Martin where the neck is typically finished then glued on to the body. This set had the the neck on, they sprayed, I had to scrape or score the finish down in that seam to get it apart and not have everything shattered. So I'm just going through his spots, making it kind of uh, more subtle that this was taken off. I mean, it's a 50 year old guitar. You, odds are a 50 year old guitar is playing really well. It had a neck reset. It, it's something that has to happen eventually, just like a refret. It's not uh, the end of the world to have that done on a guitar. But I'm of the philosophy that you, when I'm working on them, especially a classic guitar like this, you want to hide your tracks as best you can. Make it look. For f pulling these frets, let's get a real close look. They are really worn down. Gibson does the binding nib thing, but as you can see, that, that plastic binding nib is just pretty much non-existent. So this neck doesn't really need a, a full fingerboard leveling, but I'll go through and just kind of clean things up and make sure that there's a nice surface for me to, to fret into. So we're on to prepping the fingerboard for, for frets. Uh, there are just a, a tiny bit of binding nibs. There's nothing there to save, so I'm skimming that off, making sure it's even with the rest of the fingerboard. And we're, we're kind of locking out here. This is a 50-year-old guitar, but the fingerboard is pretty darn close to level. It didn't really look like that until you kind of skim off where any glue and whatever the residue from under the frets is taken off. And then you check it with a straight edge, and it's pretty darn close to level. Really important thing is to use a radius gauge. Often on really old guitars, people are just kind of rushing through. Uh, you know, sometime decades ago, people weren't doing things as accurately as they are now. But this guitar is a really good 12-inch radius. It's really good 12-inch radius. That's what Gibson uses, uh, so we want to stick to that. The reason why I'm checking it so often is I'm going to use a, a radius block. Just kind of skim this off. I'm not getting too in-depth doing this. The thing is, is you want to stay very straight with the fingerboard. Long straight passes. If you twist the radius block at all, you're then rounding down the ends of the fingerboard. You see that so often on old guitars when you're doing when you're working on something that's been refretted before and the fingerboards have been sloped off on the sides. You gotta make sure that you don't do that because that makes the guitar play... It's not the way it's supposed to be. You can hit your side dots on the side or it just... You end up with something that's supposed to have a relatively flat fingerboard and it's really round and it just doesn't play as well. So you gotta really, really use your tools when you're doing this. Now I got to go through and uh, dress the fret slots before I, the frets go in. As is, uh, there's you know there's dust and probably bits of glue and whatever down in these slots. Plus the very top of the fret slot, the, the corners are real sharp. Well, when you put the fret in down inside here where the the bead and the tang meet, that's not a really sharp corner. It's rounded. So you want to kind of round these corners back so that it'll sit all the way down to the wood. The bottom of the bead will be touching. And being that this has binding, uh, what I like to do is a little, little secret technique here. Not, 
necessarily secret, but I don't want to go all the way through and put a notch in the binding on either side. So I just, uh, I do one half of it and I put my thumb or a finger leaning over the binding so I can't actually bump the, bump the binding. Just do a little bit like that, move on. And just keep going through all of them. Once I've done the treble side, I'll flip the guitar around, do the bass side. And it depends on the, the, the condition of the wood. Sometimes I'll use a nice sharp file because it's going to cut real well. Sometimes I'll use a dull file if it seems like the wood is going to chip because the, the sharp file, can we're going across the grain, can grab and break out too much of the wood here. So this one is going pretty well. I'm using a, a sharp three-corner file just to... Being careful, if something were to happen, then I, I address it at that time. But this is going smoothly. All right, time to start putting the frets in. Uh, I always like to start at the highest fret and work my way towards the nut. Uh, that means we're starting off at the fingerboard tongue. There's nothing underneath to properly support the fingerboard there. If you're pounding the frets in, you can break the top. I have a, a tool I made. Uh, there are clamps made like this, but I, I don't know, I, I didn't look up how much they are. I think they're like under $50 or something. Uh, I could be off by quite a bit, but I just took a regular F clamp. I used this call that's uh, for putting in a drill press or an arbor press. Just made a little block, connect the two. As I'm, you know, screwing the fret down, this rotates so that, uh, you know, it's not real, uh, the clamp isn't spinning round and round. It'll stay and press the fret in. I, I've, uh, I just decided to make one on my own, try it out. I like it much better than using a fret buck. Fret buck's this uh, big metal th thing that uh, sits on the top and has a little clamp that goes underneath. As you put pressing the, pounding the frets in, they tend to come loose. I just don't like having to constantly figure out how much pressure to use. Uh, so. Just homemade tool, save a bunch of money. I like it a lot better, I get a better result. Uh, so now you're gonna see me put a, a fret or two in using this. Now when using this method, I prefer, uh, usually I prefer to put a little bit of glue down in the fret slot and then put the fret in. But having done this uh, a bunch of times, I like to, on the fingerboard tongue, I like to put the frets in first. I'll tape off both sides of the fret and then bleed a little super glue down on both sides. Uh, it's just, whichever way is more or less mess plus sometimes trying to get this into place and get the clamp in the glue can set up before you get the the fret pressed in so that's another reason why I like to do it this way all right so, uh, get the fret in place so inside the guitar I've used some double stick tape and uh, stuck a block of wood underneath the fingerboard tongue because I don't want to clamp this against any braces or anything. I want to have the, the block against something flat inside to get a nice even pressure. It's just a matter of lining this up. Sometimes I might have to hold the, the clamp in place. There it uh, fret slipped down in. Give it a little bit more pressure. Take this off and see where we're at. Need to give a little more on that side. Just kind of a feel thing and watching the fret. Make sure you see it seat all the way down. You don't want to actually clamp so hard that you're crushing anything. So it's just, you need to have the fret slide into place. And that did it. All right, um, I'll keep moving on with the rest of them.
there we go. Gibson Dove Custom. We're all finished with this. Sounds and plays great. Uh, I gotta admit that was a, a pretty big surprise getting the neck off and finding out that the, the dovetail joint was straight and not a V-shape. Uh, I, I don't know if I've seen that before other than maybe like some miscellaneous uh, you know like kind of Sears Harmony whatever type instruments. Uh, not specifically those brands but just kind of the the off brand, the cheap ones from way back when. Um, otherwise, I haven't seen something like this on a Gibson, Fender, uh, Martin, or anything like that. Uh, it makes it quite challenging to get the, the shims fit, to have it go straight in and out. Uh, you know, it, there's no taper, so it's you, you got to kind of take your time and figure out where the thick spots are on that shim so you can get it all the way in and have it holding tight once it's all the way in there. Uh, but just got to follow through. Uh, got refret, new nut. Those are pretty common on a guitar this age. Uh, it, it's back to playing and sounding like new. And uh, time to get it back to the customer. So uh, if you enjoyed this video or you have any questions about this or any of my other videos, uh, you can even leave a, leave a comment or the about section of my channel is my contact information. You can contact me directly. And we'll see you next time.